All right, Jeff, we are back for more all of the right. Hall of Fame of Faith. Yeah, this is and great. You're going to be with us all week, aren't you? That's right, all yeah, week. Yeah. And we're actually talking about barbecue for a quick minute. Oh, now, it's not the focus is, yeah, of yeah. today's message, but okay. uh, my name is Kyle, this is Jeff, and we're the Bible Guys. Well, uh, Kyle, you know, barbecue is one of my favorite yes, topics to is. ever talk about. So that's amazing. Yeah, I mentioned it to him. I was like, hey, we should talk about barbecue. Ooh, and his eyes lit uh, up. Absolutely. <laughs> so how long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> 20 minutes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, we're going to do a, we did a draft yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And drafts are amazing. And, and uh, so we thought we would do another draft today. Yeah. And only this one is a, so can we put barbecue and grilling together? Sure. Because, you know, for the purists out there, 100%. they're going to want to differentiate between yes. grilling, which yes. is just cooking over hot fire, yep, yep, yep. and barbecue, which yep. quite honestly is what? what? What is barbecue? What is pure barbecue in your mind? Oh, shoot. Now you're going to put me on the spot. I don't know, man. Low was... and slow. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, I that's, you, yeah. that's right. Smoking Smoke. It. Yep, that's right. Yep, yep. Okay. So uh, what are we going to do? We're going to do our our five favorite or four favorite. Let's let's bar- let's, okay. let's draft our four favorite things to barbecue or grill. Okay, I'm good with that. I'll start it off uh, for this one. I, and um, I got more creative ones coming down the line. But the first and foremost, the thing I love to grill, um, love the barbecue, love the smoke it as well as steak. Steak, steak yeah. man. If you can cook it low and slow. Wait, what's your favorite cut of steak? Uh, uh, strip steak for me is yeah, yeah. yeah. You like that? I like it. Yeah, my favorite is a good Delmonico. Oh, okay, like an inch and a half. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going good... with affordable <laughs> options here. <laughs> so we we had some guests in from out of town, um, from uh, Texas and California mm. uh, last week, and uh, so I just said, I said, hey, we're gonna go all out. I'm gonna cook you the best steak you've ever made on the grill. Oh wow! And so we went out and we bought um, prime Delmonicos. They were like Holy 40 smokes. bucks a piece. <laughs> Holy smokes. It was incredible. And let me tell you, every bite bring tears to your oh eyes. Oh, my god! It was gosh. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, my favorite thing, one of my, I think my favorite thing to smoke mm. is I love to do salmon on a cedar plank. Oh, yeah. So salmon. get that cedar mm. plank smoking really good mm. and then mm. uh, fillet a salmon. Yeah. Love it. When I've had... Yours at church. Yeah, and some dill it. and so, so good. Oh, so good. Yeah. So smoking, especially if you're going to do like six hour of a cook, <laughs> yeah. is like I like I like ribs. Yeah, yeah, you love ribs? like spare ribs and baby, you know any of that yeah. stuff, man. So good. You take six hours and there's this whole uh-huh. method that I read about online. It's like three, two, one. You yeah, do yeah, the yeah, thing. So good. it gives you uh-huh. for someone like me who likes to stay. I like uh-huh. to. We talked about this recently. We like yeah. to both grill and just hang out and relax. But when you put something on yeah. for three, you know, for six hours, it's it's cool. You go in there, spray a little bit down. Yep. You put some sauce on it. Yep. Gives me the ability to kind of pay attention. While one of I'm my relaxing. favorite things they have the radio on with the Tigers oh game gosh, going. Yeah. You know, baseball. Yeah. Just the sound of baseball outside, smoke it's everywhere. It's great. I love that. That. Yes. Yeah. Hey, ribs are good. So, do you like fall off the bone ribs, or you do, do you like a bone, uh, like a bite? Fall to off your, the bone. Yeah. Fall off the I bone. like. Yeah. There's a there's yeah. a method to where you grab the uh, the tongs, and you hold that, and uh-huh, they should uh-huh. they should actually move uh-huh, almost uh-huh. very flexibly. Yeah. So in the competitions, they mm-hmm. don't want it to fall off the yeah. bone. They they want a bite. Little, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. more, a little yeah. more bite. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, my favorite thing for long term smoking, and I don't do it often enough, but um, I I like a, like a, a Boston butt or a, mm. a shoulder. I love for pulled pork. I really oh, like, nice. I love a good pulled pork. That sounds yeah, great. It's so good. Oh man. Hey, then I'll go with something a little more creative. Um, recently I've done this a few times, but jalapeno poppers. Oh yeah. Those so take great. some jalapenos. Uh-huh. So anybody who hasn't done this, you can even do it on the stove if you wanted to, yeah. but uh, you, you take the, the seed, how many, however many of the seeds you want to take out of the jalapeno, you fill it with cream cheese. Uh-huh. So now just put a little seasoning over that and yeah. then wrap it with uh, bacon. Have you, have you ever oh, blended the cream cheese with uh, cheddar cheese? No, it sounds amazing. Though. It is incredible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But then you, if you smoke that and let it even just 30 to 45 uh-huh. minutes, just low and slow, oh, my gosh, yep. it just melts in your mouth. So good. Yep. I, th- I think they call them uh, – I can't remember what they call it. When you, when you put in the cheddar cheese and uh, um, uh, sausage. Ooh, okay. Into, right? So you, you crumble up sausage a lot, mix it all, and cram it in there. Cheese, really, really all good kinds too. of yeah, variations yeah, to jalapeno poppers. Uh, yeah. I need to try. <laughs> there's, there's a million of them. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite things is uh, – it's called a Boston fatty. Mm, uh, never heard not. of it. They're so good. So, uh, so you take a sausage and burger, and you make a long like a loaf, and then oh, okay. flatten it out like an inch thick. Okay. Uh, first, you make a web of bacon. So a web of bacon. Then you flatten out the sausage and burger on top of that, and then you fill it with um, uh, uh, roasted artichokes and roasted peppers, and then you roll the whole thing up into a log. Okay. And then you grill that 
uh, on the on the, oh, the grill. Oh my goodness! And uh, it it's probably a heart attack. Every bite's a, a <laughs> heart attack. <laughs> but oh my goodness, every bite is phenomenal. That's so yeah, good. yeah. In fact, I don't know when our our viewers are listening to this, uh, but I imagine yeah, if you're like us, summer, it's man. early for us right now, yeah, and my yeah. stomach is is is, is growling <laughs> from thinking day. about this food. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right, your so last my, one. Here's my your last one. one. My last one is uh, bacon wrapped Oreos. Ooh, so really? get some Oreos. Yeah, you wrap them bacon. It's the sweet and and the savory at the same time. Have you ever had them? Uh-uh. Oh, dude, it's 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 surprising because I've had friends who've talked about it, and then once you have one, oh my gosh, it's bacon so good. wrapped Oreos. Yeah, yeah. Are and they so, like double stuffed, double yeah, stuffed double Oreos? stuffed Oreos. You Ooh. wrap it in bacon, and then when you, when you especially you got to cook it slow for sure because what it ends up doing is the 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 um the crumble around the Oreo just gets soft. Yeah, you got to cook the bacon obviously, but man, every bite is just like heaven. It sounds really good. So try that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, hey, mine is really simple. Uh, one of my very favorite things if I go to a barbecue place. Uh, one of my favorite things, to be honest with you, is uh, shredded smoked chicken mm. with an Alabama white sauce. Oh, oh it's so good. I love shredded. it. So, yep. I like it. Well, okay, so we did yeah. spend six, six minutes talking about barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, hey, let's finish up this passage. <laughs> what a great I way to start. It, man. That's, uh, I think Jesus loves barbecue. Yes, I think agreed. that's why he wanted us to talk about it. As a yeah, matter of fact, I saw a thing in the, in the Bible one time after the resurrection when the disciples were out fishing mm-hmm. and uh, they look up on shore and Jesus sitting there and he was, he was grilling fish. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He was grilling fish. Loved Jesus it. was a griller. Oh, yeah. He loved it. He loved <laughs> yeah, he's grilling. like, I'll take care of the grilling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's, yeah, he's hanging out yeah, there. So we just want to be more like Jesus. Exactly. That, that's 100%. what this is about. That's why we do this. And a big part of this podcast is all about <laughs> helping people be more like Jesus. Get out and grill. Okay. So uh, we're going to pick up in verse 22. We read the first half of the chapter yesterday in chapter 11 of Hebrews. We'll just pick up in verse 22. It says, uh, it was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt, even when he was commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. I think I already read that verse yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover, to sprinkle blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went through right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab, the prostitute, was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and all the prophets. But he's about to. By faith, these (laughs) people (laughs) overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength, and they came back became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their faith in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half and others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised, for God had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. Mm. Man, oh man. It's good. Man, I feel like, just to point out, I think uh, the writing is so... Good. Like, like it's very poetic, mm-hmm. you know, very mm-hmm. strong. I like the... Uh, you feel like God, God did a good job making sure that this got written? Yeah, that, I think so. Yeah, Just like, job, dang, God. good job. Well, yeah. we, even this whole part, like, we, it would take too long to recount the stories of Gideon, and then, and then he recounts the yeah, stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But just t- kind of summarizing what they did, they became strong in battle and put whole armies to fly. I mean, like, it's yeah. it'll pump you up, man. Mm-hmm. Read this before a big sports sports game or something like that, yeah. you know, get you pumped up. But I think the thing that stood out for me is, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always impressed by the fact that, you know, and so many people are surprised by this, 
that you have Rahab the prostitute. I mean, oh, yeah. it's just, mm-hmm. it's something that just stands out right off the bat. You know, you're, if somebody's new hearing this or reading this, they're probably were, were like heard that and were like, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, what would you say that if somebody first, because you've okay. read well, this he, many yeah, times. So, so here, here's the story. Mm-hmm. Um, Moses sends in a couple of spies into Jericho before they attack Jericho um, in the promised land. And uh, they're, the spies are being hunted down by the, 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 the soldiers inside the city. And so they run into uh, this inn where Rahab, the, the harlot, is mm-hmm. what the King James would say, um, uh, ran the place and she hid them. She hid them away. And then uh, when they came looking for the, these two guys, she was like, I don't know where they are. And they leave. And so then she comes back to them and she said, hey, listen, I believe that your God is going to give a victory over our city. Mm. And I want you to remember me when uh, when you guys come mm. to uh, attack. And so they said, leave a scarlet rope outside your window and God will protect you. And so he did. And so her faith was, I believe in your God. Yeah. And so I'm serving and helping as much as I can. And that was enough. You know, Rahab, uh, the prostitute here, uh, Rahab, the harlot, she's in Jesus lineage. Mm, Yeah. So what's really amazing isn't so much that God says, hey, even this woman had had faith. What's really amazing is there are multiple people in the book of Mark and in the book of of Luke. I mean, the book of Matthew Matthew, and the book of Luke that give um, the lineage of Jesus, both from Joseph's family and from Jesus or from Mary's family. And they include some pretty rough characters mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the things I love about the Bible. If you and I were going to fake a religion, we would not put a prostitute in the, in the family lineage, uh, you know, the great, 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 great grandmother of the Messiah that we were putting in place. We wouldn't do that. Right. Uh, but God doesn't blink. Right. So when God sees, hey, this is just the truth. Yep. This is what happened. She had lived a wicked life. God, her faith turned her life around and God respects and honors that and uh, gives her the respect yes. that comes. So yes. this, this is that storyline. Well, I love and it. Yeah. You would think that the the um, the natural thing to do would be to omit that detail. Absolutely. Right? You'd get rid of it. You'd get rid of it. You'd want to hide That's it. You want to push it down. Yeah. It's something in the family that you may have. Sh- oh, don't talk about aunt, whatever. Grandma, you know what? The, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and it's so interesting. God just like, no, no, no. And I think it's just a reminder of. You know, oftentimes when we feel like we're disqualified, we're unqualified, whatever it may yeah. be, you know, I think God just I, looks I, like, hey, I had, you a heard friend, of we Rahab? Were, I had a friend, we were down south, we were talking about uh, family lineages, and I told him I didn't know much about my family lineage, but I was interested. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, man, we have a rule in our family. And I was like, what that? what's that? And he said, if you if you didn't know them personally, you don't ask about the next the, the generation. <laughs> behind. I said, why not? He said, our whole family's full of horse thieves. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's you so know, from back, in, yeah, the, yeah, back yeah. in the old cowboy days, yeah, he dude. said, we don't want to like know. Like 1885, whatever that show is, 1880 something. Exactly. Well. So, you know, uh, that's the, a lot of people want to erase their past, yeah. but not not God. God's like, hey, you know what? That's the truth of her story. And God specializes in redemptive stories. Yes. He's, yes. He specializes in taking a broken thing and making it new. Yes. And that's what he did with Rahab. And that's what he did with so many people. Yeah. And you, Moses was a murderer, by yeah, the way. Right. We, we <laughs> celebrate Moses. Mo, Moses yep. murdered a yep. guy. Yeah. And God, you know, 40 years later uses mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you go through these stories. These, these aren't perfect well, And you, you kind of pointed out yesterday, for anybody who missed yesterday's episode, go back and listen to it. But you talked about how people have to go all in in their faith. And yeah. I believe that. But it's interesting because it's like people may be listening and feel like, well, I can't like they're ashamed to go all in because of something from the past. Yeah. Every single one of these people. I, oh, I mean, they're, they're almost all of them. I don't think there's anybody out here who you're like, oh, they're fully blame. You had Jacob in here. You talk about Noah. You talk like Jacob's like, a Jacob the deceiver, man. Yeah, like Noah got drunk. Yes. Uh, Joseph was so prideful. His brother made his brothers hate him. Yes. You, you could go on through this whole list of people. Yes. There are no perfect. Gideon didn't have enough, hardly enough yep. faith. True. To, true he got true. mad at God. True. True. Uh, Barack was willing to sell prayers. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's it's, it's Samson, Samson. Obviously. Yeah. Samson had all kinds of yeah, problems. Girl Women issues. And money. Girl and, issues and, for sure. And uh, uh, anger uh-huh. issues and uh-huh. all that kind uh-huh. of stuff. David. Yeah, committed oh, adultery, yeah. killed a guy, yeah. one of his own special forces guys. Yeah, it's pretty phenomenal when you look at God. Only has sinners to work with, mm-hmm. so God does not go. Oh, it's okay that David committed adultery. No, that's it. No. There are consequences, and David suffered in his family for those things, certainly. But God only has sinners to work with. So when we repent of our sin and we turn to God, the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah meaning he was chasing after mm-hmm. God all the time. So, yes, he had that sin in his life, but he got his life turned towards God, was chasing God. And and this is true with all these people. Samson had that moment when he turned back to God and went, you know what? The way I was going is wrong, and I'm, I'm going to rely on God one more time. And, and I think that that's really where it's at, is God blesses our moments of faith. 
there are consequences to our moments of lack of faith. Yes. yes. Right. When we choose to live a fleshly life. But, um, and we God see it really, and we even see it in all these stories too. Every story. We see it. Yep. Um, but I also want to just point out too, I think, so that's a huge lesson to be learned from this, uh, the end of this chapter, but yep. then also on uh, 35, what do you make of the whole Dude. others were tortured? Um, there, well, well, we, we, see. Like, we like the part before that, right? <laughs> yep. The part of it before it was they overthrew kingdoms. Yep. They ruled with justice. They, they received battles, what God had promised yep. them. They win battles. They quench the flames of fire. They escaped death by the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong and viable yep. in battle and put whole armies to flight. We're like, woo! Yep. That's it. Yep. That's what I want. And then you go, uh, but others <laughs> <laughs> were tortured, yep. refusing to turn from uh, God in order to be f- set free. And it goes on, talks about the difficulties. Mm-hmm. Both of those, the, the victories in battle and the shutting mouths of lions, that's a faith thing. But also being willing to go through the torture and the suffering yeah. is also faith, right? So faith is not a guarantee that life is going to be easy, right? Right, Because we are living in a spiritual battle. There is you know, a war between good and evil, and there are casualties mm-hmm. on both sides. Mm-hmm. But what they were looking forward to is they weren't afraid of what happened to them in their physical body because they weren't thinking that, you know, in the previous uh, day, the, it talked several times about how they felt like they were living in tents and they were just traveling through this life yeah. and that this this world is not home. And they were looking to that that eternal city, the real home that God has for us. And then you see these people are willing to go through the incredible difficulties because they know this isn't home. Yeah. They have a mission to run here. And then when the mission is done, they will retire to their eternal home. Yeah, yeah. And that that's sufficient. That's enough, man. That drives their faith. Yeah. And there's this belief out there right now that like this prosperity gospel type thing where yeah. it's like, if you name it, claim it, if you yeah. just believe enough, like and that sort of thing. And it, it really, when you read a, uh, verses like this, you realize, okay, here's the hall yeah. of fame. They claimed it, you know, they got there, yeah. but what did it take? What was yeah. the cost involved? And it's, it, it I, this is why it's, I think it's so important for people to actually be in the word yep. and actually be reading God's word because when you hear something like that, it feels good. It itches, it's, it right. itches your ears. It makes you excited to think, oh man, if only I just trust God, this is my life is going to be this, I'm going to be richer and ha- whatever. And it's like, no, when you actually pay attention to yeah. not only the Old Testament, but you also pay attention to Jesus's followers and yeah. how, what came from them really choosing to follow Jesus, it wasn't a ton of uh, tangible external uh, success. Right. Oftentimes it cost them everything. You know, when I was growing up, I can remember uh, having a youth pastor one time, multiple times I heard this, mm-hmm. youth pastor was back during the whole communism was mm-hmm. still a big issue and all this stuff. Say, hey, if the communists invaded and stuck a gun to your head, do, you, you, have, yeah. do you have the guts That's scary. <laughs> you know, to, to stand for Jesus or would you sell out mm-hmm. and recant your faith, right? Because that's the test of your yep. faith. And I remember that was a terrifying concept. Mm-hmm. I was really afraid. And I used to think, I don't know. I don't know if what I would do. That that's a scary thing, you know. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to suffer. Nobody wants to be put in that situation. So when we read those things, or when Jeff and Chris or Jeff and Kyle talk mm-hmm. about this today, I think it's tempting to go. I don't know. <gasps> that's horrifying. That's so scary. Listen, um, uh, the more you contemplate it, I think the better you are. So the best time to make a decision is when you're sane. Yeah. Not in a crisis. You don't you don't wait to make a decision in a crisis. You're not thinking in your right mind at that moment. Right. Today's the day when you go, what yeah, I Jesus, I hope, I, I don't know. I don't know how I would respond, but I hope that you would give me the power. To, I want to rely on you and, and, and trust in you. What you're doing is you're, you're articulating and establishing your faith today yes. that in that crisis, your intent today is that you will dig in and that you will stand for Christ even when the persecution comes. That's good. And then so many people throughout history that have suffered for Christ, that's their story, is that they planned ahead of time, that they would stand firm even in the in the problem. And when you make that plan ahead of time, when you decide ahead of time, God, regardless, whether it's sunshine and roses and I'm winning battles and you're expanding my faith and my strength and uh, shutting the mouths of lions, or the other side of it, if I wind up having to suffer for you, if it costs me my job, if it costs me my friends, if it costs me my life, whatever it takes, I'm all in with you. You make those decisions while you're thinking sanely and you're not in the middle of a problem. You're more likely to make that good decision later. Yeah. So I think that's great. That's, that's and I think, it's, I think it's a really great reminder for anybody here who today, who today maybe is going through that. For one, just like you said, you have to think through, pre-decide what you're going to do in those moments. But yeah. I also think it's really powerful to remember that um, when you go through those trials and tribulations, you aren't alone. In fact, even the way Jesus lived his life, 
He was a sinless man. He's both fully God and yeah. fully man. Right. But was his life easy? No, no. 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 I mean, not only, not only the rejection of, yeah. of his peers, um, which is a huge one, the loss of his father, right, right, in his life. Like, he had been through so many trials and tribulations, and he himself modeled that, hey, life isn't always going to be yeah. easy, you know? And well, you he, know, he, was, he had the direct connection to the father. Humanism is a, is a religion, yeah. too. Yep. Worshiping humans, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes within Christianity, humanism creeps yeah, in yeah. to where we begin to believe that God's primary goal is to make humans happy. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Right? As opposed to Jesus prayed, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Jesus wasn't even praying for his own will. He was praying for God's will to be done. And what he's recognizing is God has this story he's telling. God has this plan. God has this mission. There's a war between good and evil, and humans are caught up in it. So yes, your story is important, but your story is God's story, not your story. And so we have to understand that uh, instead of us thinking that uh, with this humanistic idea that God's entire goal is to always make you happy, instead, God's goal is to make you like Jesus. That's what the Bible says. His goal is to grow, in the book of Romans, to grow you up to the fullness of Christ Mm -hmm. is what it says. So God's goal isn't always, but I will say you will be happy. Yeah. Um, when you become more and more like Jesus. So here's the thing. Verse 40 at the end to wrap this up today says, for God had something better in mind for us. That's really at the core of real faith. Mm -hmm. So I can have faith, you know, when I found out I had cancer, for instance, um, when I've been in dangerous situations uh, in around the world, you know, helping start churches in different places where machine guns get pulled out and people are angry and stuff. In those moments, you have to remember, okay, I'm, I'm one of God's uh, tools, right? I'm one of God's resources. And so he has me here in this moment. And no matter what happens, God has something better in mm-hmm. mind for me, right? So mm-hmm. then, okay, God's in control. God is going to, if, if, if I breathe my last breath in the next few minutes or in the next few months, that's okay, because God has something better. And when you're convinced that God has something better for you, it removes a lot of the doubt and the fear and it strengthens your faith. That's really good. Yeah. That's a great takeaway. Well, then I think that's enough because I think that was a great way to end uh, the chapter yeah. 11. I actually love Hebrews 11. So I encourage you even at home to go back and reread over this chapter. And then tomorrow we're getting into uh, Hebrews 12. But uh, thank you guys so much for joining us on The Bible Guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow.